Recently, Victor Kerman flew his stolen MiG-25 from the communist side over to CCAN. Now, the communists are kindly asking that CCAN return their jet. So the leadership at the Central Kerman Alliance Network is asking the communist, what do you have in exchange? In reply, the communists ask, do you remember that space center pilot who went down over southeast Kerman? And that you reported missing? Well, he isn't missing. A communist patrol found him. Would CCAN like to trade a stolen jet for a POW? Didi has been well taken care of. This is Echo 3. And let's discuss a Cold War Kerbmas gift exchange. Both sides have agreed to the deal, and Didi will be coming home. The Central Kerbin Alliance Network has carefully loaded up the MiG-25 onto a transport ship and is now taking it back to communist territory. While the aircraft was in Seacan territory, engineers went over every part very meticulously. And reassembling the plane is really hard, but they're pretty sure they have all the parts together anyway. The communist jet is very impressive. It appears to be a very capable interceptor. But now, after having thoroughly gone over the aircraft, CCAN engineers have come up with an idea for a brand new heavy fighter aircraft. They are thinking of a large fighter that is extremely fast and that could be best described as a missile truck. If the need arises, a fighter like this could successfully take on the MiG-25, or in all honesty, anything that the communists have developed up to this point. And as promised, it's Didi Kerman waiting for the crew on the dock. Waiting for Didi on the ship are Jebediah, Bill, and Valentina. They are overjoyed with being able to reunite with their friend Didi. Didi too is happy to be going home. However, after spending a long time as a POW, it might take a while for him to fully recover. Didi has felt angry and abandoned. But seeing his friends on the ship has reminded Didi that his friends did not forget about him. Jebediah suggests that maybe a little bit of flight therapy is just what Didi needs. By the time they all got home, the new K-15 is ready for its first test flight. Didi is thankful that he has been once more given the opportunity to fly the latest C-CAN fighter jet. With the afterburners lit, Didi pulls back on the stick and enters into an unrestricted climb. After a long period of time battling depression and feeling useless, he has once again been given a sense of purpose and excitement. And this truly is a remarkable jet to fly. The powerful engines give the fighter a thrust to weight ratio a little over one. In mere seconds, he was able to take the aircraft from the runway up to over 4,000 meters. Then. He dives the aircraft down to around 2,000 meters and pulls up. He's going to light the afterburners and see just how fast this plane can go. He's leveled out, increases the throttle, and lights the afterburners. Didi is pushed back into his seat as the aircraft accelerates around 2 Gs. At this point, the aircraft is still fully armed and fully loaded with fuel, and yet, in short order, it still breaks through the sound barrier. But Didi doesn't stop there. He keeps accelerating. He's going to see just how close this jet can get to Mach 3. Now, just a little over two minutes in the flight, the aircraft exceeds Mach 2. At these speeds, the aircraft handles just a little differently, and it wants to pitch up. But Didi confidently maintains control of the aircraft, even as it exceeds more than 850 meters per second. Didi now disengages the afterburner, and slowly begins to turn the aircraft around and head back towards the airbase. He uses this time to familiarize himself with the newer electronics in this fighter. The heads-up display is nice and much better than all the old gauges that he was used to. Many things have changed since Didi was away from the Space Center, but being back in this fighter makes him feel right at home. Didi knew that Seacan was headed to Duna, and now he has found out that those missions were successful. While he was in captivity, he was only informed about the successful communist missions. And, during the boat ride together, Bill excitedly talked about this strange signal that was found on Duna. The signal 
contained an SSTV image. But at this point, no one has been able to decipher what exactly the image means. There have been lots of theories about how to interpret the image, but more importantly, for whom is the signal for, and who were its authors? Some have suggested that the answers lie further out into the solar system, and to that end, a probe has been sent to voyage out to the Joule system. Joule has five moons. Perhaps the answer is on one of them. All of these questions have fueled the discussion about extraterrestrial intelligence. It would seem that someone should be starting a dedicated SETI program, or simply called SETI. But at this point, the Space Center doesn't have funds for a project like that. Perhaps some wealthy Kerbals will be willing to help privately fund a SETI program. But as the Central Kerbin Alliance Network exists in a state of Cold War with the Communists, much of their funding is still dedicated towards military hardware. Hardware like this brand new K-15 that Didi is piloting. And while much of Didi's time at the Research and Development Center has been spent testing military hardware, he is a certified Kerbal knot and has been to a few missions to space. Maybe he'll get to do that again soon. That sounds like something that he would enjoy. And while on Kerbin, POWs and jets were exchanged, the Voyager probe has continued its journey towards Joule. The probe is equipped with a magnetometer boom, a gravioli detector, a barometer, a thermometer, and a couple mystery goo containers. In all honesty, if there is a mystery civilization in the Joule system, these are not the best instruments for detecting one. Nevertheless, they will help CCAN better understand the Joule system. These instruments are useful in giving CCAN scientists a good first impression of what the system is like, which should in turn help better prepare future missions to the planet and its moons. And because future missions are anticipated, the probe was installed with a very large relay antenna. This should help ensure that future probes, or even Kerbals, are able to maintain constant communication back with Kerbin. At this point, the probe has just entered Joule's sphere of influence, and nothing out of the ordinary has been detected. But in the coming days, the probe is scheduled to fly by Joule's moon Tylo. The flyby is being used as a type of gravity assist, so without needing to expend any fuel, the probe can freely enter orbit around Joule. But Joule's sphere of influence is extremely large, so at this point, that flyby is still many, many days away. But so far, everything is going well. But so far, it's been a good curb miss. The Communist and CCAN had a gift exchange, Didi was able to come home, and the Voyager probe has been able to transmit data back from the Joule system. As the probe flies closer, what else will it find? I am Echo 3, and thanks for joining me to discuss the Cold War. And happy curb miss. I'll see you next time.